We all like to think that dolls are a child's best form of entertainment. But what happens when those dolls begin to take a life on their own, some even going as far as to hurting and placing the curse on the people he or she doesn't like? Throughout time, there have been many accounts of dolls being used as a type of vessel to the other world, a world where nobody is safe, and that includes you and me. Join me tonight as I bring you the true legend behind one of the world's most haunted dolls. But before we begin, make sure to lock your doors, check under your bed, look behind you, turn off those lights, and listen to this tale I bring to you. One could say that the legend behind Robert the Doll begins as far back as the 1880s, when a woman seamstress named Margaret Stife began to make and sell felt pincushions and the shape of small elephants for some of her clients. Margaret soon began to get word that her pincushions were being used by her customers' children that took a liking to the elephant design. This sparked an idea and soon she went on to design other animal themed toys for her customers' children. Soon after, she saw the need to recruit the help of her brother, and together they went on to form a small company under their last name. Her plush toys were so meticulously made and gained so much popularity that in 1887, her hobby turned into a large company after an American buyer ordered over 3,000 teddy bears during a so-called teddy bear craze that was happening in America after then-President Ted Roosevelt was being shown in a cartoon alongside a young cub. Every household in America wanted to own a teddy bear toy. People from all over the world have credited the Stife Company for the 1902 original creation of the teddy bear stuffed animal. That same company can also take credit for unintentionally creating what became to be known as the world's most haunted doll. Although the exact date and year of when Robert was created is mostly left to speculation, it is strongly believed that because of its childlike size, the doll was originally intended to sit in front of a German window display modeling various clown outfits. But, as faith would have it, and the one thing that we do know for sure is that the doll eventually found his way to America and was given as a gift to a child who would become Robert's best and most likely only friend. The child's name was Robert Eugene Otto. There are many people that believe that from the beginning, Jean had an unhealthy relationship with the doll. They became constant companions and he spent many hours playing with the doll, becoming virtually inseparable from one another. Jean went as far as dressing it up in his own clothes and treating the doll as if it was a living being. He loved the doll so much that he ended up giving it his very own first name, and thus, Robert the Doll was born. The iconic sailor suit that Robert now wears actually belonged to Gene himself as you can see him wearing in this photo. So it should come to no surprise that as much time as he spent with Robert, the doll learned many secrets that he whispered in his ear. But soon after, the doll began to gather a reputation for being haunted and quickly went from an average toy to what some people began to describe as the most evil living thing. There are many conflicting versions that have to do with the true origins of the doll. Some people believe that this doll was created with the help of dark rituals by an angry servant who made a life-size Buddha doll and gave it to Jean as a type of revenge for being mistreated by the autos. 
Others believe that the doll inherits the spirit of a baby who was fathered by Jean's father himself through an affair with his servant's wife. One version claims that Jean's father impregnated his servant's wife Minnie. Minnie will soon give birth to a little girl but after various complications the child died. Shortly after the passing of the little girl, Minnie used voodoo magic to trap her daughter's spirit inside the doll. The thing about this story though, is that many people who are sensitive to spirits have claimed to feel the spirit of a small mixed race girl living inside the doll. There have also been sightings of a small girl walking around or sitting in the stairs that lead up to the attic where Robert once lived. She is described as being around 5 years old, dressed in a small white gown, and wearing pigtails. Other people who visit the artist's house have ran away in fear after hearing a girl's disembodied laugh coming from the halls whenever they spend the night. <laughs> Personal friends of the Ottos and the Ottos themselves have mentioned that Jean was quickly to blame Robert for any mishaps that happened around the house. He would repeatedly claim that Robert was the one who did it and that Robert would walk around the house moving and breaking things so that Jean would be the one to get in trouble, all the while smiling as he did it. On many occasions when Jean played in the attic, everybody could clearly hear two distinct children's voices coming from the room, but whenever somebody would go upstairs to check and see who else was up there with Jean, they would always find him all alone talking to his doll. On many occasions, while the Ottos entertained friends who went over for dinners, many of them were left both confused and in fear after hearing the dolls giggle whenever they walked near it. Some also reported that the doll would suddenly appear in various rooms without anybody's support. And as if this wasn't enough to scare you yet, the doll apparently has the ability to change his facial expressions depending on his mood or if he doesn't like you. And he is not afraid to show you. As the years went by, Gene grew older and eventually moved away from his parents' house to live in New York. There he became interested in art and became a popular artist and married a woman he met and fell in love with. All of this while Robert was left abandoned for many years locked up in a chest in the same attic where he and Robert played many hours. Unknowingly to both of them, Faith would bring him back together one last time. After Jean's mother passed away, he decided to move back to his childhood home and bring his new bride with him. Jean soon introduced Robert to his wife, but she was in front of the doll and instead she had a very uneasy feeling about it. Unfortunately, not long after moving back to Key West, Gene was struck with Parkinson's disease, of which he suffered for a long time. His wife did go on to say, In the months preceding his death and as his health failed, he spent most of his time in the attic room talking to Robert. Soon after Gene's funeral, his wife sold the house to a neighbor who bought it for his friend Myrtle. As if Robert disagreed with this arrangement, the neighbor's wife died shortly after of carbon monoxide poisoning from a faulty exhaust system in a car. Myrtle became the new owner of what became to be known as the artist house after Jean's death. But, unbeknownst to her, she also became the new caretaker of Robert. And although the stories of the paranormal activity continued, Myrtle became fond of the doll and also began dressing it up and displaying it in her own home. Eventually, she too sold the artist's house, but this time, she would take Robert with her. This proved to be a big mistake in her part as she soon began to have her own negative experiences and hauntings with this doll. Eventually, she became to be both very afraid and frustrated with Robert that she made the decision to get rid of the doll for good. So she decided to take the doll to the Fort East Martello Museum where he now resides. Myrtle made no runaround about how haunted the doll was, 
and warned the museum director about the doll's ability to haunt and make people feel sick, possibly even having the ability to kill someone if he didn't like them. Myrtle died exactly three months after donating Robert to the museum. Since that very first day, the museum has had their very own strange encounters with Robert. Many of the staff have seen him move and play tricks on him. Some claim to see Robert follow them through the room by either moving his head or just his eyes. They've also seen a small five-year-old girl walk around the museum after closing hours. As you may have concluded by now, Robert is by no means your typical doll, and whether you believe the stories or not, the museum where he now resides has strict rules you must follow if you decide to take a photo of him. One of the main rules, and probably the most important one, is to always ask his permission before taking his photo. If you fail to do this, he will manifest to you in your own home in ways that will frighten or hurt you. Many people that have taunted the doll have later expressed their regret by sending him letters of apology. A few weeks ago while visiting the Martello Museum, the staff showed me an infinite amount of apology letters that they have received on a weekly basis. And believe me, there is a lot. Many of them are expressing regret for taunting the doll or taking his picture without permission. A lot of them have even felt ill for not following the rules. I've personally spent over an hour completely alone with Robert while visiting him, and I don't know if it was my excitement and nervousness of being in his presence, but most of the footage I thought I was recording while talking to the spirit that inhabits him was somehow deleted and destroyed from my video footage. All but the videos and photos that I presented to you today. My personal conclusion is that there is definitely something to this doll. Whether it's Jean's Otto's projective energy living inside of him, or the spirit of Minnie's daughter by means of voodoo magic, I am not certain. The only thing I do know is that since my visit to Robert, the paranormal activity centered around my Robert the doll has increased. That could have been my own fault. Maybe I should have never asked Robert to come visit the doll if he wanted to. So if you're watching this video and hoping to veer away from Robert's wrath, make sure you acknowledge him in the comment section and thank him for allowing us to watch this video and post his photos. Tonight, as you lay down and close your eyes to sleep, make sure you pay extra close attention. Maybe you can hear the laughter of a small child standing next to you in the dark corners, watching you as you sleep. <laughs>